Hello, everyone. My name is Patricia Zamora, and me gusta acting, playwriting, screenwriting, and cooking shows. Welcome to the May Gusta podcast. My name is Jay Grease. I am your host. Today with me, I have Patricia Zamora. Hi, everyone. She is a actress, playwright extraordinaire. Uh, and welcome to the podcast, Patricia. Well, th- thank, thank you so you much. Thank you for having me. I was no. happy to receive your message and be invited <laughs> to be on your podcast. And congratulations on this. This is a great setup. Oh, yeah. No, uh, Pat it does a wonderful job at the Baba Cora Core Studios. Kudos. Um, yeah, no, it's fantastic. Uh, it. No, thank I really appreciate you doing this. Um, I was really nervous about asking you because uh, we've met a couple times. Um, you know, we've had a few conversations, but uh, asking anybody to sit down for an hour for free and talk about, you know, their life and stuff is uh, is a bit anxiety inducing for me. Well, um, I mean, it's my pleasure. Do you want to share how we met? Uh, so yeah, no, I uh, acted in uh, Patricia's uh, play uh, Un Nuevo Capitulo. Yes. Uh, uh, this past September. Uh, directed by the great Jade uh, Esteban. Great actor. Uh, fantastic. Uh, hopefully, I, I'm trying to get him on next month. So Fabulous. we'll see if we can make his schedule work. Um, but yeah, so the the way the you know podcast works is basically we're going to talk about what you want to talk about, okay. about what really what you like, what you're passionate about. Um, and so uh, the first topic, you know, is is going to be acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So you know, you when we talked about your topics, you had mentioned that you had stopped acting. Mm-hmm. Um, for about 10 years. So tell me about your, your, your journey from the beginning of, with acting. Okay, well, um, acting, performing, writing, um, being artistic has never been um, like a... Priority? It, no, like a, a choice. It's just, okay. it was in me. It just, yeah. it has to be. It's part of who you are. It's part of who I am yeah. ever since I was really little and mm-hmm. um, just have always admired and um you know felt that longing Mm -hmm. and trusted that longing from when i was really little to um to today yeah and so really listening to who i was and um i studied theater in college uh much to the dismay of many (laughs) um because you know it wasn't going to be like an instant money maker or you know one of those careers where yeah it's like yeah. oh well, major in this and fall you can fall mm-hmm. back on something you can fall back on and um, and I just really I loved the arts and I yeah. wanted to be engrossed in it and I I know I made the right decision mm-hmm. um, but I had always here's it's not really conflicting but I had always dreamed about being a mother yeah and um, I remember when I was in middle school and into high school I would write down the names of my son and daughter. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember what name. I, I think the name of my son was going to be Jade. I oh, really wow. do. And my daughter was going to be Sapphira after Sapphire because mm. that's my birthstone. Okay. And um, and I just always wanted a boy and a girl. And I have a boy and a girl. Wow. And so when I had my first child, I decided, um, you know, I'm just I'm I'm giving up theater and um, anything artsy and just focus on motherhood. Yeah. And it was really hard because I was very involved Mm -hmm. in, um, in the community theater program in the the town that I lived in. And, um, it it was really difficult, but after about 10 years, that longing came back Mm -hmm. and I started training again, started taking some acting classes, started writing, and um, I saw an opportunity to audition for a play that's really popular here in San Antonio called Las Nuevas Tamaleras. Mm-hmm. It's ran in San Antonio for, um, I guess, about 27, 28 years. Oh, wow. And they had an opening in the cast. And I thought, I'm going to audition for this. And I talked yeah. to my husband about it. And he's like, well, how are we going to do this? And I said, I think it'll be OK. Yeah. And um, lo and behold, I was cast in that show. And I have been with that show for... Uh, this is starting my eighth season oh, wow. this year. And it's That's awesome. re- it really just opened up so many opportunities for me. So, I mean, total credit to so, uh, Las Nuevas Tamaleras. Mm-hmm. It runs every December in San Antonio. And it is, it is a story about 
three Latinas who embark on making tamales for the first time. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what they're doing. And I'm the very bossy, controlling yeah. um, in the group, the bossy, controlling leader of the group. And they're like, you don't know what you're doing. But somehow we, um, we invoke um, these two spirits, um, mm -hmm. these old timey uh, Latina ladies, uh, mm -hmm. you know, one from like the 20s, maybe and one from uh, or the 1900s and one from um, the 50s. Mm -hmm. And they guide us through our journey of making tamales. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny because it's it's um, it's slapstick. Mm -hmm. And um, it's shtick, as I like to call it, yeah. and uh, it's very physical, and mm -hmm. it's a short show, but we sell out every single year. We tour. We've to been touring in West yeah. Texas for the last three years, and um, it just really um, was very satisfying for me. And then I started... Um, I started recording voiceovers at work, my nine to five, because I'm yeah. a nine to five. And uh, I really got excited about voiceover work. And all of that was happening at the same time um, within that when I when I decided I'm going back into the arts. Yeah. I, did, I have dipped my toe into a few things now and I'm really feeling confident. Mm -hmm. And so at the same time, I was building my professional voiceover so, career. So you're acting in your voiceover, like you got back into both at the, oh, yes. you got back in acting and you started voiceover at the same time. Yes, at so the same time. So Las Tamaras was like your, your re-entry into acting. It, it was my re-entry into acting, yes, gotcha, exactly. Gotcha, gotcha, exactly. okay. Um, and so um, what, what was acting like for you before doing all that? Like was that local theater? Was it, you know, because um, your degree is in what exactly? It's in theater arts, in with, theater an, arts. with an acting okay. emphasis. Okay. And so um, I actually um, did get a teaching certification and taught theater for a little while and um, decided that you have to throw your entire self into that. Your life mm -hmm. is your students' lives, and uh, man, I admire anyone who does that. My daughter yeah. has a fabulous, fabulous theater teacher and, mm -hmm. and theater teachers in her um, high school department. Yeah. Um, it, it was, I knew it wasn't something that I wanted to do forever, and so um, I actually um, started working in marketing and gave up teaching yeah. for a mm -hmm. little while and started working in marketing and fundraising yeah. for the arts at the Alley Theater okay. in Houston. And um, what do they call that? Uh, there's a book. I don't remember the name of it. I don't know if it's The Artist's Way or one of the books where I felt like um, a good term for what I was doing was being a shadow artist. I was working. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do was write and be on the stage performing. Yeah. And what I was doing was influencing um, that arts organization as someone who um, was a director of marketing and mm -hmm. fundraising, but it wasn't something that where my heart, my heart was really the, somewhere your, else. There was no artistic yes. aspect yes. to it. Yeah. And so um, I was in Houston at the time and I started working for a children's theater company and started doing some acting mm -hmm. uh, with them. And we toured to different places. Yeah. And um, then I met my husband. Yeah. I met my husband and um, he was moving down to um, the Rio Grande Valley where he was from. Mm -hmm. And I followed him and um, we built a life there. And so because of the way arts organizations are in the Rio Grande Valley, there mm -hmm. aren't any uh, professional yeah. uh, arts organizations, uh, regional theaters, AEA mm -hmm. theaters, um, things of that nature. Film community is not as uh, robust as it is, yeah. as like Austin or, um, or even the Houston, Dallas area. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started doing a lot of community theater and got very involved in community theater. Mm -hmm. So I was show after show after show, directing, acting, and then we decided to, to start a family. And yeah. that's a long answer to your question <laughs> about like what I was doing beforehand. Yeah, no. Because I feel like it was uh, multifaceted in terms of, um, you know, before I, I got married and moved to uh, the lower... Rio Grande Valley. So when you got married and you stopped acting, what was there, what were you doing to fulfill that artistic, creative side of you? Because I feel like that's something that I, I neglected myself for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, 
I'm sure, of course, being a mother and being being a parent um, is one of the greatest joys in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but of course, you have to take care of yourself, take care of someone else. You right, know, so. Right. What did you do to kind of feed that? I I really didn't do anything. And so it was hard. It was really, really hard. And I didn't understand, um, you know, being young myself, not that young, but being young. (laughs) Yeah. um, I didn't understand um, this, like, emptiness that Mm -hmm. I felt. Yeah. Until I started doing it again and realized I could be a better mother and a better wife. Yeah. When I was actually being doing who you what are. I loved. Yeah. 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 And I wish I would have known that from the onset. And I think the reason why I just gave it up like cold turkey was mm-hmm. because in the little acting group that I was in, um, in that community theater, mm-hmm. I saw someone who was like a hundred percent in at the expense of her child mm. and, you know, making him be in shows um, yeah. when he was really little, mm-hmm. just because she might've not had childcare for him or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and also just missing out on time with him when he was younger. Yeah. And so I think that influenced me to, and sometimes I can be very black or white. I know that about myself mm-hmm. and I've grown a lot, but back then it was like, this way or that way it yeah. can't. there's no in the middle mm-hmm. like maybe you could do one show a year instead of every single show in the season like having yeah. to work um you know in that way um but i was very black or white at the time so can i ask what that balance is like now okay so i mean it's still <laughs> it's interesting because i really feel that we get messages from the universe about like where we need to be mm-hmm. and so the the journey that i've taken with with this professional career that I have in education as a, I'm a leadership consultant. And okay. so I'm a coach to leaders. Um, I help leaders with specific appraisal things. I've just really um, advanced in my career in that mm-hmm. way. And I get all of these messages that I'm in the right place when I'm doing that. And it's very fulfilling. Yeah. And so, and I have um, reconciled that this is part of my life that I told myself I, I was really poor in college, like really poor in college. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to be um, struggling like that again. Yeah. And so I had to make a choice about uh, not only what I wanted, but what I didn't want. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I like to say that I um, I work to live. I don't live to work. Yeah. Although I'm really good at what I do. Yeah. And so in terms of the balance, because I have that mindset that I um, I work to live, mm-hmm. uh, it enables me to, to do those things. So things are getting a little bit busier and crazier for me. Like I, it's been project after project after project. And so right yeah. now I'm working on two writing projects at the mm-hmm. same time. And it hasn't been formally announced, but I'm going to go into rehearsals in May mm-hmm. uh, for a major stage production. Okay. Um, tomorrow, I'm going into the studio to record mm-hmm. an audio web series. So I've been really, really busy. And mm-hmm. so my kids are older now. Which makes it easier. It makes it easier. They yeah. can take care of themselves. <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, you know, running a little behind on my way over here, right? Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> I put in like one of those H-E-B um, real simple meals or whatever. They're, they're pre-made mm, meals, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It takes about 20 minutes for them to cook. And uh, my daughter was the one who, like, prepared it for me. She, like, stopped it at 10 minutes, stirred mm-hmm. it, you know, put it back in, set the timer, had it out for me. Both yeah. my daughter and my son helped with that. So they're actually very supportive mm-hmm. of, That's great. of me now. So I think that now that they're older, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I talk to them about my projects and um, – and ask them, what do you think? Yeah. May's going to be super busy. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, go for it, mom, go for it. So um, my husband is a thousand percent supportive as well. Yeah. So that's, um, it's exhausting. It's really burning <laughs> the candle at both oh, ends. Oh, yeah, for sure. But when it's something you're really passionate about, mm-hmm. it's not really work. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so so w- was the voice over? Was that what got you started? Back into acting, mm-hmm. not it the was. play, right? So the vo- so tell me about it the voiceover work. Okay, so uh, working in the educational industry, um, I don't know. Somebody liked my voice, like the superintendent mm-hmm. of the of the district liked my voice and said, "Ask Patricia to 
to record this, you know. Mm-hmm. And I actually was helping with the with the scripts, which I'm a writer, so that was like, yeah. And um, and I built relationships with people uh, that worked in communications departments and started recording videos for the school district. And I actually became, I won't say what school district it is, but the voice of that school district, like, yeah. it might even be if you were on hold in that school district, mm-hmm. you might even hear my voice. And so that really just, I had a high level of energy around that. Yeah. And I thought, I think I, this is something that I'd like to pursue. Mm -hmm. So I researched uh, microphones and equipment and, um, you know, I did it, I'm doing voiceover on the cheap, but I'm doing it. (laughs) And so I've continued to record in my home studio Mm -hmm. closet. And, um, you know, I have my equipment, my voiceover equipment. Mm -hmm. And um, when I changed school districts, I continued to record voiceovers for this new school district. On the side, in addition to, I was recording luxury home uh, VOs uh, for um, a company here that made videos to sell Mm -hmm. luxury homes. Yeah. And so I have voiceover experience in the educational world, Mm -hmm. in the real estate world, um, audio web series. I've done commercials. I have a friend who's a producer at a radio station down south, and he'll give me some scripts every once in a while. And so I'm working as a voiceover artist. Yeah, Yeah. that's awesome. And I've left the the second school district that used me a lot because COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So everything had to be turned over. Yeah. And um, I was recording every night. Every oh, night, wow. every night, and um, because all of a sudden all of this training ne- and information needed to be turned over mm-hmm. via video, and I had a home studio, so a uh, producer was working at home. She had all of her equipment, mm-hmm. and it was all. So what kind happening. of? Because uh, I know, like for me, when it comes to acting and being in a role, you know, you definitely. Uh, put a lot of like uh, thought and you know to your character and you know what's not on the script you know you Mm -hmm. build that up inside of you Mm -hmm. for voiceover work like what kind of prep or what kind of like you know what does that look like because sometimes I feel like your voiceover work could be really short Short. sometimes it could be kind of long yes you know you're not really a character so to speak though so like what does that look like it varies um so for for the real estate and educational Mm -hmm. VOs it's typically my voice yeah. And I'll ask them, do you want something upbeat? Do you want something more, um, you know, a little robotic sounding? So it's definitely a collaboration. Yes. Yeah. It's a collaboration with the client. Mm-hmm. You always ask the client. Now, yeah. because I do um, like web series VO mm-hmm. as well, those are characters that I yeah, create. Yeah, okay. And so um, this Audible Prey Parade Productions, which is the uh, voiceover company that I work with, and they create um, stories via um, the audio world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two uh, web series that are out. And um, the first one is called Triple Six, and okay. it's based on the the work and the novels of Sean Patrick Bridges, and he is the producer. So this is like an animated web series. It's not animated. Okay. It's just, list- just listening. It's just okay. audio. Yeah. And then, um, and then the second one. Um, let's see. We did Triple Six, mm-hmm. and then what was the name of the second one? I can't. Oh, yes. It was a. It was a Dollar Baby uh, production, which is a Stephen King. Okay. And oh, I can't wow. remember the name of it, but um, it was really good. And both of them are doing well on the festival circuit. Okay. But the one that we're recording, I wish I could remember it. I have a terrible memory sometimes. <laughs> needs to be written down. Um, the The one that we're recording tomorrow is based on, they're all based on his novels. Okay. Um, that he turns over and he'll he'll write them and do episodes into scripts. This mm-hmm. one is called Parasite Zero and it's a sci-fi oh. thriller. And uh, with my two... Um, jobs that Mm -hmm. I did with multiple characters on both um, of the the VO web series that I did for Sean. Uh, I now have a lead in um, Parasite Zero, so I'm really excited. And I like to tell folks that um, in this industry, as Mm -hmm. you know, and in every industry, it's about relationships. Yes. So I am not difficult to work with. (laughs) I am flexible. (laughs) I will jump in. Yeah. Yeah. and that's really important. Really, yeah, really important. 
Yeah, so um, where can we find those web series at? So if you go to um, your your internet browser and go mm -hmm. to audibleparade.com Audible or okay. audibleparadeproductions.com. It's either okay. that or audibleparade.com. Okay. Then you can find links to Triple Six, um, the Stephen King Dollar Baby. Um, and then eventually Parasite and Zero. And eventually Parasite Zero, which we recorded – episode one uh last month and so okay. now we're working on episode two so it, awesome. that, that won't roll out for a while because yeah. each episode is it's a process and it's really cool yeah. because we record in a recording studio it's called los senderos it's in blanco texas okay and it's it's you look at it and it looks like this barn but it's really fancy on the inside yeah and they're alpaca everywhere <gasps> and it's really cool i love alpacas yeah they're so cute and i'm just used to walking by these alpaca and they'll smile at you and i'll oh. smile at them but it's really neat um hill country vibe that's awesome i mm -hmm. love llamas and alpacas me too Those are my favorites me too i want to own some someday someday that's my goal yeah yeah. That's why I'm that's why I do what I do. That's Just why like you do. an old llama. Yeah. One day. Well I've got um <laughs> you know, you can buy products made with their mm -hmm. wool. Yeah. So and it which is they're not cheap no. either. Um, but they're really soft and That's nice. Yeah, emotional support type <laughs> animals. So uh let's talk about um the las uh I'm gonna Oh I'm las nuevas tamaleras. I, I'm not gonna butcher this. Okay. Try. Tamaleras. Las? Yeah, just call it tamaleras. Tamaleras. Yeah, you got I, it. I know nuevas. I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tamaleras. Yeah. Okay. My Spanish is, is, people is call okay. It, people call it tamaleras. That's tamaleras. fine. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it just runs for just a month during December? It or? runs, actually, um, before COVID, we ran for three weekends starting the weekend of Thanksgiving. And okay. And then when we, we took that that COVID year off. Yeah. Um, things sort of changed and, you know, mm. just like everything sort of changed a yeah. little bit. And so the producer, who's also the playwright, who's also the director, who mm -hmm. also stars in it. Yeah. Um, she decided let's do a Thursday, a Friday, two shows on Saturday and two shows on Sunday. Oh, wow. And she profits from that. That's how she makes her living, and mm -hmm. it brings joy and happiness to so many people in San Antonio. So we run for only one weekend, and it always sells out, so you have to get your tickets ASAP. One weekend in San Antonio. One weekend in San Antonio. And then now we have been touring in West mm -hmm. Texas uh, for the last two years, I think, and this, this year we're going to be in Odessa and Fort Stockton okay. in uh, November. Fort Stockton, is that in Texas? It is. Okay. Yeah. It's near Odessa. It's West Texas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Middle of nowhere. But they don't, you know, they, um, when we performed in Odessa for the last two years, mm -hmm. many of the audience members told us, uh, we've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> and um, and these were Latinas that were talking like that, right? Yeah. And then they'll speak like fluent Spanish, like, mira, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. um, and then they'll talk like this, which is really cool. I love West Texas. I love yeah. the vibe there. And they were so appreciative of the show. Mm -hmm. And so they brought us back. That's awesome. And Fort Stockton also, they want to share the love with uh, their yeah. community as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. really great. Yeah. Um, and so have you acted in any other uh, productions? Because um, that's only once you know, a year. Yes, so that's what once What else a year. have you done since then? Well, I've been um, a company member with a theater company called Players at the Point. Okay. And um, Players at the Point brings awareness to uh, LGBTQ um, issues or just the That's LGBTQ awesome. community. Yeah. And um, I felt that that was very important. Being somebody who's been in the theater world mm -hmm. for so long, um, I've had so many friends yeah. that, um, you know, and I see what's happening um, yeah. politically mm -hmm. um, with rights, and it, it's concerning to me. So I think that it's important to bring Absolutely. awareness. Uh, to the LGBTQ community. And so um, Players at the Point does uh, something called Thank You for Being a Friend and they're Golden Girls parodies and they're done in drag. They're done. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen you post about that. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. And so the there's three directors that lead that group, Players at the Point, mm -hmm. Jose de Hoyos, um, I can't remember Gilbert's last name and Christy Waters, who is a very well-known um, 
probably best drag queen in San Antonio. Yes. She's at the Paramore every Sunday. No, I, I saw her. Yes. I've seen her at a drag show She plays before. Blanche. She's, she's, she's awesome. She's fabulous. Yeah. A fabulous actor can really, really those moments, um, those emotional moments, mm -hmm. um, she really hits those as well. And um, anyway, so we do, I don't know, if, maybe for the last two years, I've been right after COVID is when I, mm -hmm. um, so maybe for the last two years, yeah. I've done like maybe two shows a year with them. Okay. And um, just so fun. And any little, I love playing characters. I love bit parts because mm -hmm. I can make the most out of them. <laughs> it's an opportunity to really play and have fun. Yeah. And so they know that they can count on me to really make the most of a bit part. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Because, you know, the girls are the stars. Yeah. The girls are the stars. Mm -hmm. But I love playing multiple characters, and that's what I do with Players at the Point. Um, we also did a serious show, as a matter of fact, a year ago, um, May, we did a serious show, Jose and I, called On Tidy Endings. And um, it was a, it's a drama that I guess it was popular during the 80s, and it brings awareness to the AIDS epidemic. Epidemic, mm -hmm. and um, it was really uh, a serious, serious yeah. drama yeah. where I played a woman whose husband, um, you know, he left her for a man, uh, but then almost as soon as he left her, he found out he had AIDS and and he was dying. Mm -hmm. And she was still so much in love with him and very much in his life. And yeah. then on tidy endings, uh, the is about how after his death, how do you how do you divide up everything? How yeah. do you, how was his um, spouse treated at the funeral? Mm -hmm. um, all of those things. And it was, they have it out and they cry. Yeah. And it was, it was a, a great show. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Is there anything uh, besides the web series that you're, um, you got coming up as far as acting? Oh, let's see. Well, I go into rehearsals. Hmm, when is this going to air? Probably Wednesday. Wednesday. Thursday? Okay. It hasn't been publicly announced yet, so oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can't. I, I, no, I can't. Have to it. I have to. I have to wait till it's. But you have some. You have. You have a I project have, coming up. I have a project okay. coming up, and it's something that I'm really excited about because it's musical theater, oh. and I have not um, done a musical in like over 20 years. Um, but it's. I set a goal for myself mm -hmm. that this year hopefully if someone would have cast me yeah. uh, that I was going to do a musical. I always enjoyed it. I love singing. Um, and I got cast in a musical. Not so much the dancing I part. So Jade added a dancing uh, I part remember. To, to your play. Yeah. Uh, much to his dismay, because <laughs> I had to dance in it. You did great. And oh my, oh, it was so, it, I, it was rough. I, I, it, was, I, it was everything, huh? Oh, it, I, I'm... I'm not the greatest dancer. And, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, gosh, Jay, <laughs> you did not tell me there's going to be dancing in this. I'm so sorry. Well, I apologize to him. So I'm sorry, no, Jay. No, no, I'm gonna get, I'm the, gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm going to get it, Jay. I'm going to get it. That was the highlight of the, like, the finale. <laughs> oh, it was, oh, it was great. It was great. It the was ending so was good. fantastic. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I could just hear Jay to my sleep. One, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. Wow. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm with you. Dancing. I mean, I don't think I'll have to do much dancing, yeah. um, but um, definitely acting, which is mm -hmm. my strong yeah. suit, and some singing, which I'm working on. And so, my return to musical theater, the show will will run. The show to be named and announced will run in um, in June. Yeah, the, we'll rehearse all May. Okay, and it'll open in June, awesome. and it's a musical somewhere here in San Antonio. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so speaking of of uh, the play that I was in mm -hmm. uh, that you wrote. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to the next topic, which is pl uh, playwriting. Yes. Um, so let's talk about that. When did you write your first play? I mean, what, you know, um, what's that process like for you? Like, hmm. let's start there. Okay. Well, um, if people ever think they have to have the um, the perfect circumstances and um, setting to write, then mm -hmm. they may be putting off writing for a while because sometimes depending on your um, life, 
you may not have that nice, quiet place to, yeah. to sit and write. And so I wrote my first show while I was studying. I, I had something written mm-hmm. when I started taking acting classes again and started putting together these scenes mm-hmm. and these... Um, um, these monologues, these different monologues with these different characters, because I love playing characters. Yeah. And then I was encouraged to put, you know, put them together and create a one-woman show. Yeah. And I did, and I did, and so um, kudos to Jade for um, just really being my cheerleader during that mm-hmm. progr- that process. And um, he said, reach out to a theater and and just do it. Yeah. And I did. I finally called a theater and. And it, it opened at the overtime, and it was really successful. So, did you act in it? I did. It was okay. a, it was so a, you, what you they call it. a okay. one woman show or a yeah. solo show. Yeah, an original mm-hmm. solo show. And it, it um, the title of it is Curanderas and Chocolate Cuentos of a Latina Life. Okay. And so it was based. Uh, the overarching theme is faith and healing. Okay. And there are, are many characters that I played in that show. And um, it was so well received that the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center called me and said, we would like to offer you an artist in residence. And uh, and I ran that show there. And when was this? This was in 2019. Okay. Yeah. And I was so excited about uh, booking the show, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all over the place. And I was working on building my... um, my marketing contacts, and then COVID happened. Yeah. I had momentum and then lost momentum. Yeah. But during COVID, I wrote Un Nuevo Capitulo, an American yeah. no- novella. Fantastic so, play. Um, I had always had the idea for that play, always. And I take notes mm-hmm. in, in my phone and in my Google Drive, and I keep them, like when I have an idea. Because mm-hmm. You as a, a writer and a mm-hmm. stand-up comedian, you know that if you don't write it down, you'll say you'll remember it, but Gone. you don't. Yeah, you do not. So I have, uh, I had like different notes that I just sort of strung together. Yeah, and I wrote that during COVID time. Mm-hmm. So um, I was so grateful that it was produced in 2022. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was a great. Uh, it was an honor to be a part of that production. Um, that was my first time getting back into acting, um, in, in over 10 years. Wow. Um, well, you did great. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, it was a, I, it's a large cast, you know, it was a large yeah. cast. And right now I'm working with, um, uh, the public theater. I'm a, um, I was awarded, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, but I'm I'm in I'm one of three playwrights that are in this playwrights lab. It's mm-hmm. called the Sotex Playwrights Lab, and so gosh, for many months, so I've had three readings so far of this play that I've been writing, mm-hmm. and um, in May there will be a staged reading. Yeah, and what's and the play called? It's called the Chismosas, the Chismosa Mysteries, Chismosas. Uh, a Deadly Venom. Oh. And so the the main character is the Chismosa. Her name is Lencha. Mm-hmm. And she solves crime using her chismeando and her <laughs> skills of metichiness. Yeah. So, so it's a murder mystery. It's a murder mystery. And That's so awesome. I've never written uh, in that genre. Mm-hmm. And I was really excited to do so. And you really have to just think about stuff. Yeah. Um, but so I watched a lot of like Columbo. And that's what really inspired me to do it. Through COVID, again, COVID mm-hmm. has influenced our lives, people. Um, I watched every single episode of Columbo. And Columbo, oh, wow. um, actually, the show began in the late 60s mm-hmm. and finished, the last episode was in like the early 80s. Yeah. So I was like just episode after episode mm-hmm. after episode. But it was they weren't like full seasons, because back when, uh, and you might be too young to remember, we had something called a movie of the week. Yeah, it was yeah. a movie. We had three channels, typically, if mm-hmm. you were rural like me, ABC, CBS, and NBC, and sometimes PBS, if on a clear night. And um, they would have uh, a movie of the week, mm-hmm. and it would be like a, a murder mystery. Okay. So it would be like McLeod or Columbo or, you know, uh, some other famous detective. Mm-hmm. And so that would normally run like uh, maybe two to four times a year. 
Oh, okay. So the seasons aren't like six episodes yeah. or eight episodes or 12 episodes. It's like four episodes, but they're like an hour long. So Yeah. Yeah. Was there any other uh, things you watched that inspired you for writing this? Because that's Columbo. Well, Anything? no, that is yeah. that's really it. I mean, I love it, it. I don't know if you noticed that in that writing, it's very episodic, and that's sort of the way I write. Mm -hmm. It's like they're like episodes, and it's like yeah. when, when I. When I finished writing it, I was so excited. I reached out to friends of mine, and I had a Zoom reading right away because mm -hmm. it was COVID. And um, some of the feedback I received was, you know, I can see this being on Netflix, and this mm -hmm. is very TV-ish. Yeah. And so um, I'm just really influenced by television because I watch a lot of it, and I'm not ashamed to say that because it's really research for me as a writer. Yeah, because honestly, like, that's one of my favorite like genres to watch is like detective shows and and mm -hmm. like I'm watching one right now on Hulu called Will Trent, okay, um, which is a fantastic TV show. I think it's premiering on ABC, but I watch it on Hulu, and um, that's always been like almost like a guilty pleasure of mine. Yeah. Like like uh, Hawaii Five O, the reboot. Yes, like I loved watching that show. Uh huh. Uh, it made me think about it when you said Columbo because I think the original Hawaii Five O probably came out yeah. around the same time. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, like there, I know I think about it, like there's so many like TV shows that if I wrote a memory, like this is what this is the yeah. show I would yeah. like influence me. Hawaii Five O. Yes. Now Will Trent, um, you know, uh, True Detective on HBO is a really good um, well, the last one wasn't so great, the last, but they're doing a new one. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, so I just didn't know if there was anything else that kind of influenced no, you. No, I Columbo. mean, not that I can think of. I mean, I did yeah. delve into watching murder mysteries to sort of understand, um, you know, like I guess the, the convention. And it really is, um, they're so, Peter Falk just created such a great character in mm -hmm. Columbo. And um, you know, it really is about creating that character and, um, you know, those sort of being this um, observant genius. Yeah. You know, the things that you observe mm -hmm. and the questions that you ask and the and the waiting for the responses and how they respond. Yeah. Um, so there's a there's a certain um, if finesse that each of one of those detectives. Yeah. Um, has there's oh, there's another great detective show elementary. It's about it's just Sherlock Holmes. I like, remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joan Watson is actually they, they, is is a woman in the show, um, played by Lucy Liu. Uh huh. Fantastic TV yes. show. Yes, I think I've watched a few episodes it, of that. When, when you talked about like watching how people respond yes. to things, like uh -huh. Sherlock clicked in my head. Like yes. that is that is definitely like a Sherlock thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. People's body language and yeah. tone and things like that so yeah. that's awesome yeah um, so I, I want to talk to you about another writing project that I'm yeah that's okay. what I was about to ask so um, so I was really excited after Un Nuevo Capitulo and I thought you know I'm gonna I'm gonna develop a screenplay based on this script mm -hmm. and you know I thought I'm hiring a consultant to do that because I although I have uh, some film roles on my resume as mm -hmm. an actor um, I don't know the first thing about writing screenplays. Well, I yeah. had the opportunity, um, I don't know if it was a couple of months ago, um, to collaborate on a screenplay mm -hmm. as a writer. Oh, um, wow. Because they needed somebody with my experience, um, familiar with the Latino experience, mm -hmm. that could write about Latinos, that could develop, that also was aware of like the mystical, you know, that uh, experience with um, knowing about curanderismo, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. And um, and I was brought onto this project, and it has just been amazing. And so um, now I'm much more than a collaborator. I'm also a co-author and screenwriter. Awesome. So I have a screenwriting credit now. And the project is called, it's a screenplay called The Devil's Mare. Mm. Mare as in uh, a horse. Yeah. And it takes place in the high plains of West Texas, which I don't, have you ever visited West Texas? Uh, once or twice. Well, it's really a, a cool place. I yeah. um, twice I visited the Fort Davis Mountains just to mm -hmm. decompress. Oh wow! And um, there's just a really unique energy there. Mm -hmm. And so this this story, this uh, script, takes place in Nazareth in a small town called Nazareth, Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, 
their the main character is um, someone who left Nazareth because there was a terrible tragedy mm -hmm. uh, regarding this the Starlight Lounge and the death of his best friend's or disappearance of his best friend's wife during a tornado. Mm -hmm. um, it deals with the mystical. It deals with um, a lot of different things. Okay. Um, it's it's quirky in a lot of ways. Yeah. There's there's UFOs. There's um, some dealings with the devil. There's mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of quirkiness, and uh, but a great story. There's a lot of love, and uh, a lot of development in in all of the characters. And I'm just really excited about it because we had a Zoom reading mm -hmm. last Saturday, and Sunday last Sunday, and just got some really great feedback. And so now we yeah. are. We're moving right ahead. It's been copyrighted. It's been registered with the Screenwriters okay. Guild. It's awesome. um, We're talking to producers about next steps. And I'm just really excited about the momentum that The Devil's Mare, you can go to thedevilsmare.com if you're curious okay. about the project, uh, to learn more about the other writers, Christopher Oglesby and Shannon Haley. And um, it's just a great story. I'm just really honored to be a part of it. And so yeah. I've got these I've got these plates spinning, Jake. I've got <laughs> screenplay, the yeah. Chismos on Mysteries, which I'm writing at the same time. Yeah. And I've got um, this preparation for these rehearsals that start. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm still a mother. I've got a senior and a sophomore. Yeah. And I'm still a wife. And I've got three fur babies, which really take the mm -hmm. most of my attention. <laughs> so... Anyway, That's awesome. Wanted to show uh, that because it's got so much momentum and energy around yeah. it, and I'm just really excited That's so about it. That's so exciting. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, to really, uh, I think, collaborating with those other people, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure elevates you and elevates your writing and get you to see different perspectives um, and, you know, uh, writing styles and so yes. it's been yes. it's been an experience as well it has it's really helped me it's like for me it's like school it's mm -hmm. like being part of a writer's class because mm. i'm learning so much but yeah. the collaboration in terms of the ideas oh they can do this and they can do this and oh my god they could and having so much fun with um with developing these characters yeah and um the you know the friendly banter that comes with it and then just you know like let's really look at some of the technical elements of things as well it's yeah cool. that's awesome yeah uh, and you had mentioned you were writing something about your hometown um, um or... well i wrote um i wrote a piece i blog i haven't I mm -hmm. haven't put anything in my blog in a while mm -hmm. uh, that's on my website patriciasamona.net um, but I wrote a piece many years ago called the sandia. Do you know what a sandia is? Mm -mm. It's watermelon. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And so the sandia, we used to call a place um, where um, all the trucks would deliver the, it was a watermelon warehouse basically. Mm -hmm. And so big trucks used to come and pick up the watermelons and, and things like that. So I wrote a piece called the sandia and it's actually, um, I submitted it to be um, potentially in a book called in an anthology called Somos Tejanas, mm -hmm. uh, which is we are Tejanas, you know, mm -hmm. um, Mexicans, yeah. Mexican Americans from Texas, and uh, and it's it was accepted, and so awesome. it's um, in its in the process of being published by uh, the UT okay. Press, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And, yeah. and you said you wrote kind of it based on your father who was yes. a farmer? Yes. So my dad um, was, I'm from a really small town, one stoplight town, Premont with a P, Premont, mm -hmm. Texas. And um, my dad was a local postmaster in town from six to five or whichever. Mm -hmm. But then he'd come home, change clothes and work on the farm till there was no light like mm. farming. We had cows, we had pigs, we had crops. We always had fresh watermelon, fresh cantaloupe. We had pickles, um, squash, um, just a, it was, yeah. I mean, he was so talented. Our lawns were always impeccably green, yeah. weed free. Like he just had a green thumb, like farming was in his blood. Yeah. And so like me, I think farming, was his art mm. and something that brought him a lot of joy. Yeah. And so he worked to put food on the table and take care of us. And, um, but that part of his life was something that he really, because he didn't have to do that. 
Yeah. But he did it because he really loved it. And he, and he sometimes, almost all the time, uh, so he had would do a small crop of watermelon. He would plant a small crop of watermelon. And, of course, we always had watermelon. He'd give a lot to family and friends. But then he would put some in the back of his truck and just sort of hang out on the edge of the highway and meet people, and people would buy sandia from him. So I wrote a piece about that. That's amazing. And when I first published it on my blog many years ago, I mean, I got so many hits from mm -hmm. people about, oh, yes, when the – you know, there was a Sandia warehouse in um, Lytle or Pleasanton or even people that lived in the big mm -hmm. city have experiences with that. It's yeah. not necessarily a small town thing, yeah. but it was really a, a coming of age type of a piece because I the last sentence is um, like my childhood, um, which was over, the Sandia had closed its doors forever. Mm. And um, so because ultimately it did close down and uh, that business was not in operation anymore. And um, going back to my hometown and having that experience of eating a cold watermelon with my kids after yeah. playing in the sun, it didn't bring me as much joy as it when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Yeah. And so it was sort of like a, an experience for mm -hmm. me. Wow, I like that. I'll have to check that out and read yeah. that. That's, that's well, I'm excited. Really I'm sh and whenever that book comes out, I will, of course, yeah. let everybody know because I'm really sure. excited because I've not had anything published in a book before. I'm awesome. excited. So uh, what advice would you give to aspiring writers or playwrights? Like, what would you tell them? I would say um, just do it. Just do it. The circumstances uh, around you may not be perfect. Mm -hmm. Your dog may be bothering you. Your husband may be trying to talk to you or mm -hmm. whichever. Um, try to, you can try to create those circumstances, but make the time for it. Um, block the time for it. When you hear it, which I did for so long and had sort of procrastinated on my writing, um, I just kept hearing, write, write, mm -hmm. write. And finally, I'm doing it. And, it's, yeah. and look at all of these projects that are coming. Yeah. Um, I mean, this amazing screenplay and um, the Cheese Mosa Mysteries, and then uh, these are the two other um, plays that I've written. I mean, just like to do it. Yeah. So I would say just just do it. If you have a story to tell, there's so many opportunities uh, for you to tell them. Mm -hmm. Get it on paper. Get it, I mean, in your computer. Write it down. If you think of a great idea and a great story, put it in. I use mm -hmm. my notes app. If you have Android, I'm sure they have some type of a notes app. Yeah. Write it down because you'll forget it, mm -hmm. and um, and then string them together and pull them together and and share their share your stories. There are many opportunities for for writers to uh, work in writers workshops around town. Yeah, and um, I think a lot of people are have some people maybe not a lot of people some mm -hmm. people have a scarcity mindset. Yeah, and so they're afraid that if they share their idea, someone's going to steal it. <laughs> There's not I've, enough yeah. ideas for everybody, <laughs> yeah. so you can't share your ideas because yeah. it's going to get stolen. And maybe some people have been burned before, yeah. but you've got to take a risk and put yourself out there. Yeah, just do it. You've got to do it. Absolutely, awesome. Uh, and for acting, um, one question I wanted to ask you earlier again is, what advice would you give to expiring actors? Yes. Like what? Because it can be a challenge. Yes, um, it can. I would say uh, keep training, find a good acting class, and find mm -hmm. a community that you feel safe in to practice that acting. Um, if you're taking an acting class and you don't feel safe in that acting class, uh, whether it be film or um, or stage, then it's not for you. You'll get the vibe, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. if the... Um, how do I say this without saying this? I, t <laughs> I took a film acting class and um, I feel like the um, the teacher was, I didn't feel 100% safe in that class. Yeah. And um, I felt like he was a real genius, but there was just something that wasn't. Wasn't going to wasn't gonna push you. Wasn't yeah, gonna, even though everything I yeah. learned was really good at actually auditioned and got a role, um, mm -hmm. two roles. Um, but I, there was just something that wasn't quite right. And yeah. I think it was that level of, there's a level of arrogance that I just can't tolerate sometimes. Yeah. Um, but keep training, find um, an acting teacher or an acting group that you feel safe in mm -hmm. 
and just do it. There are so many great community theaters in town. Yeah. That's the best way to build your skills is to is to do it. You can train and train and train, but if you're not doing the application mm -hmm. piece, that's different. Yeah. So I highly recommend the Overtime Theater. They do such great work there. All original work mm -hmm. and um they're constantly having auditions for uh, all of the original works that they offer. Where are they located at? Like they are located Insane on um, on Bandera. Okay. Um, so gotcha. like 410 Bandera okay. area. In San Antonio. In San Antonio, gotcha. yeah, the okay. Overtime Theater. Yeah. And, and, so, and there are so many other great theaters, too. There's the Classic Theater, the Harlequin Theater, um, the Woodlawn Theater that does mm -hmm. primarily um, musicals. It's a very, very competitive, but they put on just fan fabulous, fantastic... That's awesome. Uh, First-rate productions. Um, so actually, I think all the theater in San Antonio is really good. That's awesome. The public theater has a great season as well. But just do it. Put yourself out there because auditioning is one skill that you will have to develop if you want to yeah. do this work. Whether it's film or whether it's film, television, commercial, or stage. They're two mm -hmm. different things and for you sure. have to you have if you want to do both you have to prepare for both mm -hmm. and the audition techniques are different mm -hmm. so for film television and um and uh for, for film and television um it's really learning how to do that self-tape yeah well mm -hmm. really really learning how to do that well that's that's one skill that actually being on set and doing the work is is something else yeah and it's the same for auditioning in person for um a, theater. a play yeah. or a musical and then doing the work so preparation what do they <laughs> say when preparation and opportunity meet that's good luck or that makes good luck yeah. so always be prepared absolutely always be prepared that's it uh and so our final topic is something i'm really excited to talk about Cooking shows. Yes, cooking shows. Uh, My so, passion. Uh, so, w yes. what are what are some of your favorite cooking shows? Or, or uh, okay, think, so yeah. I'm I'm a year ago I would not have said this. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with Guy Fieri and Flavor Town. Uh, Flavor Town, and I just like I would never wanted to watch his shows before mm -hmm. because I just I didn't his character to me just didn't it didn't appeal to yeah. me. Yeah. And um, but I really got turned on to Guy Fieri when I started watching the show called Tournament of Champions. And okay. that's when the celebrity chefs, it's like a big mm -hmm. tournament, right? Yeah. So they have the East, the chefs from the East, mm -hmm. celebrity chefs and the chefs from the West. And they cook against each other. And then ultimately there are two. So it's this like episodes yeah. and episodes of cooking. Yeah. And uh, like you have such amazing chefs in this um who won this last i can't remember um who won the last one but we my husband and i watched the entire he he's kind to me he's not <laughs> as much he wants to spend time with me he has to watch a cooking <laughs> show and he's so kind to me um so um tournament and tournament of champions and that's guy fieri's right and they mm -hmm. win a bunch of money and they get to, yeah. like a big wrestling belt like oh, they get wow. to wear this belt yeah and um so then I started watching some of his other shows, like Guy's yeah. Grocery Games, okay, yeah. which they have celebrity chefs and chefs that can earn their they can earn their way to Tournament of Champions by winning on Guy's gro Grocery Games. Okay, and of course I watch like Chopped is my after Chopped. my after my yes. nine to five decompress episode after episode after episode i love critiquing the people on chop as if like i would do any better yeah like seriously you're gonna you're gonna try to bake a cake when you only yes. got 30 minutes though. oh that's a God. real oh yeah you're gonna make ice cream that's a real good <laughs> idea you idiot oh, i love watching my husband <laughs> uh i don't i don't criticize because i can't i can't cook i don't cook i don't bake but i love watching cooking and baking shows yeah but my husband he's a great cook mm -hmm. and he's just shaking his head i yeah. like what's wrong that's gonna taste terrible yeah. that's what a stupid decision and you know ultimately it sometimes it'll work out and sometimes it won't I'm like that's what you're gonna serve yeah. bobby flay yeah you idiot <laughs> yes so i do watch that you know um beat bobby flay yeah, as well that's yeah. and i'm obsessed with baking shows so i live for 
the Spring Baking Championship. Okay. Um, and they also have um, the Christmas Baking Championship show, and they mm. have the um, Halloween one as well. And they had the East. The Spring is is in coordination with the Easter. So there's like all these baking shows that I'm watching as well. Have you watched the Great British? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I downloaded the music on my <laughs> like I just listened to it. Da, 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 da. I haven't. I've da, watched da, da, like da. bits and parts of that. Uh, is it true? Like they don't win anything. Like there's no money at the end, right? Uh, I don't think they win. They uh, the title. And they have this little like it's like a yeah, but there's not like a cash stand. prize or anything. There's not a That's there's wild not, but they, there's this notoriety, and I think that they can, you know, it launches them to like maybe yeah. more opportunities. Like they can be um, a publish a cookbook or yeah. things like that. Okay. So yeah, it's Still. not like the other ones. Now they yeah. do have an American. Um, do they? Baking show like in the same vein, but it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. But and but Paul Hollywood, the host, mm -hmm. old blue eyes, <laughs> um, he helps to host the American one as well. Okay. But I live for the British one as well. I live for it, and it's just really painful to wait week mm -hmm. after week for every episode to yeah. drop. Uh, if you could pick any show to be on, which one would you be on? You mean me? Yes. If you got to pick to go on a show. <clears throat> well, okay, so. Okay, I don't bake and I don't cook, so I would not be competing. But I would go on Beat Bobby Flay because they have um, this, this um, like a celebrity judge, mm -hmm. and I would like to be that the celebrity judge, celebrity okay. judge um, okay. that would say, you know, Bobby, you're gonna keep beat this time and, yeah you know you really suck <laughs> and that's gonna taste terrible you just want to take bobby yeah. flay down a peg well, or two i mean that and that's what they do if you ever watch it they yeah. say and bobby flay we don't want him to win um and he always wins yeah well he's he always pretty, wins. he's pretty good yeah he's he's, pretty, fan he's, he's pretty, fantastic yeah. yeah so uh there's a show on netflix a baking show called nailed it where it's for people who don't like aren't like, I've seen it a, a few episodes uh, of that. Yeah, that is, I would love to be on Nailed It. Mm. Uh, I I don't think I do very good at mm -hmm. all. I'm mm -hmm. I'm not a good like I'm an okay cook, but baking is not like it's science. Fond. It is There's, it's scientific. So you've got to make sure that you have certain elements of it to make your dough rise or your cake mm -hmm. rise or whichever. Yeah. Um, I guess I know because I've seen so many people make mistakes <laughs> on the baking like, show. They show a picture of what you're supposed to bake and at the end they show <laughs> yeah. show your picture of like, what you baked. <laughs> yeah. And like it looks like yours got melted in the sun. Like it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Well, That's we had Hello Fresh um, for a while last year. We thought I hate going to grocery store too. Yeah. So uh, all things domestic, uh, <laughs> not my jam. Um, so I hate going to the grocery store and I, I wanna make healthy dishes for my family, mm -hmm. but I don't like having to go buy all the ingredients. So we decided we would get HelloFresh. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Unfortunately, I am. Yes. I don't okay. have good things to say. So, you know, I, we took turns. Like my son would make the meals mm -hmm. for it. There were for four. Mm -hmm. Uh, my daughter one night, me, and then my husband, and um, everyone got got tired of doing it. But I did like um, I liked putting all that together. I liked I'd, doing that. I'd like I like those, but like HelloFresh, when I was last time I did it, like they I kept missing ingredients, and it was oh, really that bad. would happen. Every, but are you are you like my husband, and you call right away, and then they send you like a couple of free meals? <laughs> It They'll was a pain that. in the butt to get that fixed. Oh, like my husband. They did not make it easy, I don't think. Well, what was uh, he? My experience with that. It was, easy. I don't know. My husband. But I liked pretty, it, though. He's pretty persistent. Yeah. Yeah. It made me realize that, um, I mean, if you put shallots in anything, it'll taste good. Like, <laughs> there were so many shallots to yeah. come with. And butter, right? There's a lot of butter um, in those meals. Um, so, yeah, that was really good. As a matter of fact, I wanted to go back to HelloFresh because I told my husband, we need to stop eating out. Mm -hmm. uh, we got so busy, like, from the holidays till yeah. just last week or whichever. It's just mm -hmm. been super busy, and we've never been able to really just meal plan. And yeah. so I told my husband, let's get back on the HelloFresh. And he said, just go to HEB and buy those HEB mm -hmm. -E -E meal simples. Yeah. And he said it cost about the same. Yeah. And so that's what I do. I go pick up about six to 10 of those meals. He says, don't go over $9. 
on them and yeah. it's about the same as HelloFresh. Yeah. And it's we I get like a lot of the salmon meals. I feel like your next writing project is going to be about a a, a murder mystery at a baking competition. I already have one. <laughs> See, here's here's an interesting thing. It wasn't baking. It was at a mole contest. Ooh. I wrote three separate plays for this uh, ch- for the Chismosa mysteries. Mm-hmm. And throughout the process of um, feedback, um, I decided to select only one of the plays to develop because it was very difficult to establish relationship between the characters um, in having an hour and 30 to 40 minutes Mm -hmm. in three short plays. Yeah. So as a writer, I had to make a painful decision to just focus on the one play that I am now. And I'm actually going to be taking not a serious break from acting next year, but I'm still going to do Thamaleras and I'll do um, probably thank you for being a friend, but I am going to finish those plays, get them published and do all the things that I need to do to publish the rest of my works. And so my, my next year uh, which I sort of think in academic years because I've worked in education. So my year starts in August, mm-hmm. you know, academic, when yeah, kids yeah. start school. Mm-hmm. So my year is going to be primarily focused on that. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I have some goals. Yeah. You got to have goals. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and, and doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, it was really a joy to have you on and talk to you. I think, it went I think by fast. It did. It did. I hope um, the listener thinks <laughs> it'll go by fast. Well, uh, yeah, speaking of listeners, why don't you tell them where you can, where they can find you, they yes. can follow you, what, anything you want them to know about coming up for sure? Well, um, check out my social media, uh, Patricia Zamora one on Instagram. I'm, I'm posting about the devil's mayor, the devil's mayor.com to read more about that screenplay. Um, I also have a staged reading for the Chismosa Mysteries, A Deadly Venom, coming up in May in about three weeks. Uh, maybe by then we'll be posting about the new um, okay. musical theater production that I'm going to be in. So I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so Instagram for sure. I have a Facebook as well that's a um, like Patricia Zamora Actress page. And uh, my website, which I have not updated, but I will, uh, patriciazamora.net. I'm also on Twitter, but I don't really update that as much. But sometimes I do share a few things. But I think Instagram for sure. Okay, awesome. Um, and yeah, you can find me at uh, Instagram at I am Jake Reese, um, and you can catch me Friday nights at the Blind Tiger uh, for the Midnight Show. Uh, I don't really don't have anything coming up, but if you would go to the May Gusta uh, pod Instagram, it's May underscore Gusta underscore pod and follow that. And also like and subscribe to the podcast uh, on Spotify and on the Barbara Carl Core YouTube page. Uh, if you could uh, like and subscribe there and leave us some comments and let us know if you enjoyed the episode. And thank you all so much for listening and watching. And thanks again to Patricia for being on here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jake. And thank you all for listening. Mwah. <laughs>